Hello, and welcome to another episode of Palmer Schools Presents. I'm your host, Matthew Francis, superintendent of Palmer Public Schools. With me today, I have two thirds of the admin team from Old Mill Pond, Principal Riapel and Assistant Principal Miss Lynch. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Now, before we get into it, we are within our first full year at, in, within your role at Old Mill Pond. How are things going? They, I believe, are going very, very well. Um, we've had a lot of initiatives that we have started and completed. Um, the families are happy. We've had a lot of um, great opportunity for collaboration with the community. So I think we've had a had a great great start. Been successful years. A lot of exciting things going on at Old Mill Pond today. Absolutely. One thing I wanted to talk about, and it's it's for the viewing uh, audience today, is education is littered with acronyms. Mm -hmm. You hear, hear about PBIS, you hear about RTI, you hear about BIPs and FBAs, and it, it, the list could go on and on and on and on. Sure. One thing I wanted to talk about today was one of those acronyms, MTSS. Mm -hmm. What is MTSS? So MTSS is our Massachusetts tiered system of support. And we are extremely proud of the systems that we have taken at Old Mill Pond to support the children both academically and behaviorally and social emotionally. So it is a way to provide tier support for all children in our building. When you talk about tiers, mm -hmm. can you explain that? My understanding there's three tiers. Correct. How do you know what do those tiers look like? What do they involve? So we have the three tiers, and when we talk about the tiers, the first tier we talk about how the teacher is going to provide some interventions for the student. And as we move up in the tiers, maybe more people step in, like our interventionists might have to step in and provide some tiered support for students that are struggling. And the way we go about determining that is through the data systems that we use at Old Mill Pond. And they may get to a level three where that might need to be a special intervention, a very highly supported role. So tier one can be done in the classroom. Correct. Tier two is a little bit more intensive, mm -hmm. but it can also be done, done in the classroom. And then tier three is usually something else is brought into the mix. Sure, yes. Now you talk about data, and I know we'll get into this with our, with our next guests a little bit too, can you talk about like what data is utilized or, or, or gathered mm -hmm. to, to have a student go throughout the tiered system? Perfect. Would you like to talk about the data? I sure can. So at Old Mill Pond, we have um, under the MTS system, it, the MTS provides us a framework um, where we provide supports for students and to determine what students are receiving these supports, what we do is we use universal screeners um, to gather data and that data gets analyzed and we have a team of uh, specialists that help the teachers and analyze that data and we, we use that in identifying students who need different levels of support. Um, and we have a system, a data system that we house all of that data in that helps us to group students uh, with like needs and we can form these support groups. And from my understanding, there's like data cycles throughout the year and, and students are tested either more formally with a standardized test and, you know, informally throughout. There is a system, you, you have a housing system, correct, in, in regards to that data. Yes. Can you talk about it? It's, it's called Link It. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about Link It a little bit? So I, I think it's important to note too, before we even get to our mm -hmm. Link It housing system now, where we were before um, when we would collect data, they would be in a series of different places. So we might have an Excel spreadsheet that would house our Dibbles, um, ELL, our reading data, and then we might have another system that housed something else. So we had these systems all around and people were using different forms to track this data. So there wasn't so much of a central location to have that in, in a warehouse. Sure. Um, so that was a huge, you know, concern of ours because when we would notice a child struggling and we would inform the teacher's assistant team, 
each year we might go through that process again and then you know go over it again and we said we need a, a place to house this information like a data hub like a data hub <clears throat> so that everybody you know who needs access to that has that and it's something that continues year after year with the student and we're really not you know reinventing the wheel year after year um, so that's where we came into the Link It, which Miss Lynch has really um, taken that as one of her leads this year to look at the Link It and to see how we upload the information. So, so along with the intervention team, we we um, put all of our data into this data warehouse, Link It. We developed all of our, we aligned all of our assessments. Um, which was another issue we had different assessments being used across the school we aligned our assessments because there's a link it I don't mean to cut you off but link it houses assessments yes it's not just a data where we dump the data right there's assessments as part of this piece as well exactly so they have they have their own uh, proprietary assessments that we use we they house Dibbles data we built our own math screeners in there and so all of our academic data and our social emotional data gets linked into this data system and we can access that and we can manipulate it, we can run reports and we can really di dial down and, and assess students needs on the class level on a small group level and on an individualized level so you referenced, and I think this is a good segment into you referenced the interventionists that mm. do most of this work, yeah. and we are lucky enough to have two interventionists with us yes. um, from Old Mill Pond. So I think it'd be a nice uh, time to bring them in as well. Yes, and they're an, in, an integral part of this our our MTSS framework within our school. Joining me now are two of the talented interventionist from OMP, Ms. Heather Johnson. Thank you. And Kim Rizzo, welcome. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Now, the first question I have to ask, now one does math and one does ELA. Yep. You're 50%, you're there's four there's interventionists four of us. at yep. OMP. Mm -hmm. What is an interventionist? <laughs> um, I think because we split it up and we own our academic areas, we have the background knowledge where we can look at the whole continuum from pre-K, even though we service kindergarten through fifth all the way up through fifth grade and looking at what holes and gaps need to be filled for students especially with COVID. We so not a traditional classroom teacher. Nope we have our own room we each have our own kidney shaped yep. table we sometimes service in a classroom they all have tables and we go into the classroom often but often we will pull groups out it just depends on the group of kids and what their needs are but we will bring them to our rooms um, and, and it actually works out well despite the fact that there's four of us going at the same time we just kind of keep it quiet and Kids are focused. Very large room. I've yes, been in there. it is. Seen one of the very largest large room. rooms, I think, in the building, yes. Principal Riappel talked about MTSS yes. and, the, and the tiers, tier one, tier mm -hmm. two, tier three. Where do you guys come in? We are number three. You're number <laughs> three. We're the yeah. last piece. So the teachers are really expected to do the tier one instruction, which is such as instruction everyone gets. And then tier two would be the small group piece that we actually work with them on that as well, supporting them. We do data-driven preps uh, three times a year. Three times a year. Three times yes. a year. So we look at the data and then we help them devise instruction where they go mm -hmm. a little bit back for their kids, not too far back. And then the kids who really are struggling, those are the kids that we work with. And we pull those kids based off of that data to address those deeper gaps and holes. Depending on, yeah, depending, depending on, on the, the data. data. And sometimes we even yeah. do deeper diagnostic testing. I know for math, we use one called the LIFIN where it looks at all knowledge from K through, and I can kind of pinpoint looking at the data, okay, where am I gonna start? I don't have to do the whole assessment, I can just sort of start from wherever and then and push that forward. Um, so I can get a sense of where, like, where do we need to fill mm -hmm. those holes? So it's pretty <clears throat> detailed to the student. Within the tier three. Correct. And yes. tier two is even a little bit. It's for the teacher more so. So during those data-driven preps, we talk about. Differentiation. What, how are we going to differentiate instruction within the classroom for those students? So how does a, how do, how does a student qualify? And, and, and mm -hmm. this is, can be any student. It's mm -hmm. not no. special ed. Well, it's, it's not special ed because those students already have a layer of support. It's for the kids that are in that middle place. You know, that often, I mean, I, I don't remember that as a kid, having targeted instruction like that. Um, and so I feel like that we're catching those kids 
from g needing mm -hmm. to potentially go to the special to education special process. So, and I know we talked earlier about the data cycles and things like that mm -hmm. um, with Ms. Lynch and Ms. Riopel. How does a student qualify, if, we, if I want to say qualify or use yep. that term, mm -hmm. for a tier three support where the one of the two of you are going to work with, with that student specifically? So essentially what we do is the three times a year we give the we administer some sort of universal screener okay. um, and that universal screener is used um, to measure their overall risk in reading or math. So they take we, we provide students everyone this opportunity to take this assessment um, or this screener and then the data that's collected is put into our data warehousing system that we spoke about earlier link it classroom teachers put it in to link it. Um, by grade level, and then us as an we intervention get team, it. we get to play with it, right? So <laughs> we then fun. filter the data by grade level um, to identify to identify our students. Um, and there are cut points, so that's right, that's it's right. actually nice because it's color coded in there. So you look at it's almost like looking at a spreadsheet, but fancier, and yeah. you can see, oh, okay, these students we call it intensive, strategic, right. and meeting. And so if you're intensive in the whole screener, there, there are you know, times where kids are intensive at different parts. If you're intensive in the whole screener, that's someone we're gonna take a deeper look at. Um, again, if you're not on an IEP, you're not already receiving support. That Those that's are the, the kids, kids we're gonna target. dive into. Yep. Sometimes it's just summer slide, especially at the beginning of the year. Sure. So that's why we do that deeper diagnostic because some, some of those students don't really need it. They're just, you know, they maybe need a minute with their teacher in class. Um, and some kids, because we do cycles, they will graduate-ish. And that was my next, that was <laughs> my next yeah. question. Are there, is there ever a time that yes. a student can work with you? And then after the that data cycle and things mm -hmm. like that, their gaps, mm -hmm. math or ELA, depending mm -hmm. if it's a domain or a specific standard or skill set, and then they can no longer need you. Yes. And then go that's into the a tier two scenario. or back that's what into we a want. tier one. Yeah, that's so those what we universal want. screeners dictate that, right? So those three benchmarks a year, we use those to determine who's who's cycling in and who's cycling out. So it's typically fourteen weeks mm -hmm. based on the beginning and middle of the year. And assessments. parents are notified, and they know it's mm -hmm. the fourteen week cycle. And then we do that, you know, data again, and we progress monitor in between, in between yes, because we need to know if they're making progress. progress. So we know, okay, I can leave this, you know, back in, in the dust yeah. and move along. So um, a student, and I, and I want to stress, because you did say that you notify the parents. We do. That yes. they, mm -hmm. And this is not a student doesn't qualify for special ed because Correct. they're working with you. No, this is a no. general education yes. student that has some, some learning gaps that right. need to be addressed. And it, But it is a piece of that process. So if we have a student who continually struggles and is with us for a long period of time, we use our teacher assistance team that they mentioned. Another acronym. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and they're brought forward to that. And that's a great place. It doesn't always go to a special education yeah. referral. It's just sometimes we need to have a conversation about a student, um, put better um, accommodations in place. in place within the classroom, mm -hmm. you know, with the teacher, and maybe reach out to get the family involved. Um, it's uh, to me, it's, it's a like great way integral. To keep kids from falling yes. through the cracks. Yeah. And with the data warehousing unit, we actually now use that to keep track of that information. Mm -hmm. We actually keep track of our intervention plans in there, so it'll never leave that student. This information will always be uh -huh. with the student, so that it. There, the kids don't get left yeah. in the dust. Great. Anything that I missed that you want to touch on? <laughs> I don't. I no, think we I hit it. Think so. I think we did. Well, thank you for joining thank me. This you. was exciting. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thanks us. for having us. Yeah. So where's the space that's missing? That's going to make the tent. Do you see it? Yeah. Good job. Yeah. You can flip it to red because now it's part of that red, right? So in her imagination, when you are, when we do our fact practice in a minute, you're going to use your imagination, but you should picture this because the 10 frame will help you, right? Yes. Okay. So in her imagination, Lily made a new problem that's much easier. So then we have 10 plus five, and that is super easy to do, right? In our head, what is 10 plus five? 15. 15, thanks, Dylan. Because if you have 10, you're just adding that much more. Because We call it high zero. Because if you have the 10 and you add a, like five, three, six, seven, and you just add a zero to it. Yep, and you're making a teen number, right? It's like a 10 and the extras go right on top of the zero. There's no ones in a 10, right? When you just have plain old 10, there's no, it's zero ones. So they just go right on top. So they're super easy to add. That's why we do it. All right, let's do some fact practicing. Now let's review our short vowel sounds. What syllable type produces or gives us that short vowel sound? Here close numbers. syllable. A close syllable. And writer, what do we know about a close syllable? What does a close syllable have? Um, it's a close syllable. Oh. Yeah. 
What's that? It does have an E at the end. You're correct. We don't have that silent E at the end, so we know that. But what do we know? What does a closed syllable have, Bailey? One or more... One or more... It's one... Or... Vowel. Vowel. Right, followed by... One or more consonants. One or more consonants. Welcome back. Thank you to Ms. Rizzo and Ms. Johnson. That was fabulous information. Um, just to kind of wrap it up, you know, you talked in, initially when we talked about it and you, you, you referenced it, MTSS, Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, we predominantly were talking about the academic piece. Yeah. But students could get tiered intervention, right, in regards to behavioral, social, or emotional. Absolutely. So I know, I know OMP is doing a lot of MTSS, not just in academics. So can, can you talk about the other systems of support, mainly with that social, emotional, and behavioral? Absolutely, so that, that's important for us when we are looking at the whole child, to look at all avenues, not just the academics. So we do look through the social, emotional, and behaviors. We have a DESA rating scale system that the teachers um, complete on each student and they will give us um, an area of needs in certain areas. And when we see a child struggling with a social emotional, or maybe they, they can't cope with their feelings, we are able to work that child into some of our lunch bunch groups, um, where our school adjustment counselors will meet with the kids and work on some of those strategies. And then for students that may need a little bit more, um, we have an independent contractor who comes in and provides some direct coping strategies um, to help them. So it really covers um, the, whole, the whole child is really what we're trying to get to. And so under that MTSS, that provides us our framework where we kind of align our academic intervention and our behavior supports and really do we are able to support support children completely. The entire, not mm -hmm. just the academic yep. piece, but right. like you yeah. had said, the whole child. Right, because if children come in and they're struggling with some social emotional, let's face it, they're not always ready to learn. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to make sure that we are really assessing the whole child and, and giving the needs, you know, giving them what they need in that moment. Um, yep, all needs are met. Well, I want to thank you two for joining joining me today. Uh, wonderful uh, discussion we had, and, and and the wonderful things that are going on at OMP. Thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for thank having you. us.